Hello and welcome to part 3 of this video series on scripting in Discovery. This video will be taking our script from episode 2 and looking to parameterize that script so that we can influence and change our geometry from the script rather than from manual graphic user interface commands. We'll then show you how to integrate that script and those parameters into a workbench project so that all changes can be made from the one program. First thing I'm going to do is change our script editor from debug to run mode. This is just going to solve our script a little bit quicker each time we run it. What I'm also going to do is go to the top of the script and add a clear all command. Now what that's going to do is just clear the geometry at the beginning of each script run and saves us having to manually do that step. Now if I give that script a run, you'll see that Discovery processes for a moment, the script is complete, and no visual change is observed because the geometry in this case hasn't been altered. Next, we're going to start to parameterize this script. Near the top of my script is where I'm going to place my parameters, but you can place these wherever you might see fit. The first thing we might want to change is the size of the base of this shape. So for example, let's create some variables called base length, base width, and base height. Now, if you'll recall, stepping through our script, the very first thing we did was set a sketch plane. Then we created a new sketch, and then we created our 2D sketched rectangle along that plane to then extrude it to a 3D shape. Now you can see various numbers, various measurements throughout these code blocks. The first of which is for our rectangle. We create this with three points. You can see that one of these lengths, one of these measurements is our length, whereas the other one is our width. By default, you can see that our rectangle is going from negative 15 to positive 15 in the length, i.e. a length of 30 mil, and negative 10 to positive 10 in the width, a width of 20 mil. So what we can do is we can start to substitute in our parameter names instead of the fixed integer values here. So for example, the first value is going to be negative base length. And crucially, we want to make sure we divide each of these values by two. Otherwise, our rectangle will end up being twice as long as the values we enter up here. So this first column is going to be negative base or base length divided by two. Note that the first point is negative whilst the second and third remain positive. So I'm not changing any of the signs that were already in this script. We're going to do the same for our second parameter, except this one is going to be negative base width divided by 2.0. And then what I can do is copy that and substitute it in for the integer values in the following two points. Now let's go ahead and give each of these variables a value. We'll start by assigning a value of 40 to base length, a value of 30 to base width. And it's important here to note that even though we're not using the variable base height yet, as per Python's scripting, it does require a value assigned to that variable. Otherwise, our Python code, once it's run, will throw an error and it won't work. So let's give that a placeholder value of 10. If I now give this script a run, we'll see that our new geometry is created and we have a base that is larger than what we had before. Now, one thing to note is that if these parameters are set to values that make your code blocks invalid, your code will not work. So it will likely throw an error in the interpreter saying something along the lines of so-and-so move command couldn't be executed. So for example, a common occurrence might be if this base width was made too narrow to fit the cylindrical size that we've set for the radius of this circle. In that case, the script is likely to throw an error. Now in some instances, Discovery's error handling, rather than throwing an error in the console and simply stopping the script, will encounter a greater error that freezes up the rest of the Discovery program. In this instance, if that occurs, just restart Discovery, have a look at your parameters, and go from there. For now, let's move on to including the base height as a parameter in our script. Scrolling down, we can see that that is involved in this extrusion of our base face. So instead of extruding by a fixed length of 5 mil, we want to extrude by a length of base height. Now that we've included that base height variable, we need to think about the subsequent 
commands that follow after this initial base creation. What you'll note is that each of our following commands needs to be made relative to the changes we have made previously. So for example, we previously created our base to a extrusion height of 5 mil. We then created a new sketch plane on top of that base at a height of 5 mil. However, as that base height can now vary, so too must our sketch plane. We can see here in the next code block that we're creating a sketch plane at 0, 0, 5, 5 being the z direction. However, we now want this to reflect the changes made in our base height. And so we simply set that variable to base height as well. This is something that you'll develop a feel for as you start your scripting. As you get used to this, it'll become a very natural process. It's just something to keep in mind while starting out that everything performed later in the script has to be relative to any changes made earlier. Now, if we give this script a run, you'll see that we create our shape, except this time it's got a base height of 10 rather than a base height of five. From here, feel free to add parameters for any other geometric features you might want to manipulate. The only extra one that I'm going to add for this demonstration is the ability to move the cylindrical extrusion along the x-axis, and we achieve that with the variable circle x added where we create the initial sketch circle. For now, I'll be moving into a workbench file to show you how we can integrate this script into a workbench design project. Here we have a blank workbench project. To get started, we're going to drag a discovery component system into our schematic, and we're going to insert the geometry that we've been working on. With our geometry linked, I'm going to double click that geometry tab to open up discovery. We're going to open that same script that we had in our script editor earlier. Up here in the toolbar, you'll find an embed script option. We want to select that. We can give that script a name. In this case, we're going to leave it with the current name. And then what this is going to do is embed the script as part of this discovery file. Now that we've embedded our script, we can go to the script parameters option down the bottom of your screen here. Opening up this window, we'll see a new option to create a script parameter. Selecting this button, we'll be able to create a script parameter and give that a name. Now what we're aiming to do here is to create script parameters that will appear in Workbench that we can then also use within our embedded script. So for example, let's call this first one length. And what we're going to do is set this one to be the same value as our existing script variable base length, so 30. Now note that you can change the quantity type to length and angle. However, as our script with the capital M, double M's you'll see everywhere, is already converting unitless measurements to millimeters, we want to leave this option as unitless rather than setting it to length. Now that we've created that parameter, we can go over to our script, remove the 30 value, and instead start typing parameters. And you'll see an option called parameters. Select that autofill option, enter a full stop, and then you'll see the same parameter we've just created, length. We'll repeat this process for the remaining variables. Adding another script parameter, we can call this one width, and we can set the value to 20. We'll create another one called height, and we'll set the value to 10. And we'll create one more called circle underscore y, and we'll set the value to negative five. Going over to our script, we'll access all of these in the same fashion. So parameters dot width for this one, parameters dot height, and parameters dot circle underscore y. Now, if we go back to our workbench window, you'll see that a parameter set has appeared. If we open that parameter set, we'll see those same variables with the names we've just created accessible through Workbench. Now note that their value by default in Workbench will always appear as zero. So let's go ahead and change those to create a new geometric design. So let's go 45, 30, and five. 
go back to our project, update. Now, if we go over to discovery, you'll see that our geometry has been changed accordingly. So what we've managed to do here is create a parameterized script in discovery and link that script to workbench such that we can make all the changes we need to in the one program. This is a really powerful way to create adjustments and cr generate various design points for your geometry using scripting in discovery. That's all for this video. In the next video, we'll be looking at name selections and how to manipulate those within scripting. And that's gonna become a really useful tool for any geometry preparation you might do before taking your files into say mechanical or fluent.